Hey folks, Lionel here with Cowboy Boots Hats and Western Life Enthusiast. Today we're going to do a video on horseshoeing and uh, we're going to trim a little pony too at the same time. And I'm sitting here with Casey the Farrier. What's up Casey? How y'all doing today? So uh, today we're going to be trimming up Dixie and we're going to be doing some shoes on her. And uh, also we got a little pony that belongs to the owner of the barn. So uh, let's go ahead and get into it. So right now we're just going to prep the sole and clean up the frog and get it ready for the trim. See where this foot's at so we know what to do with it. Now, as far as trimming up the foot, uh, there is a bit of a difference uh, between getting one foot ready for um, for shoes uh, rather than bareback. That is correct. Or sorry, bare barefoot. So when you do a barefoot trim, what I'm doing right now, taking all this sole out, I wouldn't do that as much on a barefoot trim. I'd leave leave it a little bit more sole, and I also wouldn't trim it as far down as I would putting on shoes. When I put on shoes, I get a much closer trim because we're trying to you know, make up for that difference with adding the shoe on there. Yeah, sure. And then also when they're barefoot, you want to leave them something to stand on. Makes sense. Now, do you have to trim them differently depending on the different shoes you're going to use? No. So, the most important thing is to have a balanced trim and a square trim. Balanced meaning if I map out the foot, so I find that my center, which is right here, and I draw a line there. I do, I do this all visually while I'm working on the foot. And then next, I find the widest point of the foot. I draw a line here and then my goal from there is having four equal quadrants and that's how you get a balanced foot and then when I talk about square I want the foot flat and square to the leg so I want you know like a perfect T right there makes sense And so that's the trim right there. Now we'll go on to the other foot. So this horse is going to be doing primarily team penning. So today we're going to put some eventers, some St. Croix eventers on the front. Uh, they have a nice fooler going across the toe, give her that extra traction in the breakover. And they also are, have a rollover going all the way across the toe, allow for easy breakover and help with those quick maneuvers. So first we're going to mark that outside heel. We're going to open it up a little bit, and we're going to bring the heels in.
Same thing with the other two. This time we're going to mark my left heel. We're going to open the toe. Uh, is there a difference in shaping the front to the rear? Yes. So fronts, a front foot should be round to assist in the break over so it can roll, roll over. Yes, and then your hind feet is your driving force. So hind feet naturally have more of a diamond shape to them. If you look at the outline of the white line on the foot and you look at the white line on the front, fronts are very round and hinds are more of a diamond shape. The toes are pointed. That's so that they have the driving force on the hind end and the brake over on the front. Yes, sir. So right now I'm just checking my fit. Overall, it looks pretty good. You can see that my white line has a big round toe and kind of straightens up the heels a little bit. And that's exactly what my shoe does if you follow the, the fuller. So we're pretty close. I like it. I'm just going to open up my heels a little bit because it comes in a little short here and here. So we're going to we're going to bump this open and bring those heels out so they cover these points. So what I just did there is called boxing. I went to my shoe and I want that heel to sit just past where you see this, where I started grinding on it. And then you grind off that edge so that on the ground side, the foot still has that support, but there's no shoe on the top hanging out past the foot, giving it something to hang on. And then on my inside heel, I did what we call safing, where I ground this all smooth and made it smooth so she clips one of her other feet. It won't tear up. Now, do the nail edges actually leave a little bit of traction, or does that just kind of fall down? If they stick up, they will at first, but as 
the the nail heads will get will get worn down over time. Okay. On uh, when we put sliding plates on like a reining horse or reining cow horse or even some heel and calf horses, um, we grind the nail heads off with our rasp because we don't want the whole point of the sliders is no traction. You want it as slick as possible. Now we're going to get rid of this extra toe that's sticking out past the shoe here. Now how do horses that uh, haven't gotten shoot in a while or maybe it's their first time getting shoot, um, how do they react to it usually? Uh, it really depends. An older horse that's on that's probably had shoes on it before in its life. It might not necessarily remember it, you know, but it's had shoes that knows the process. You can see she just stood great the whole time I was nailing those shoes on. Yes, sir. A young horse that's its first time getting shoes put on it, it can get a little Western. <laughs> they don't, they don't really know what's going on. They can feel you beating on the, on the foot. And uh, it, it does scare them sometimes. Mm -hmm. So first we're gonna nip off the excess nail sticking out of the foot. Then you take your rasp. We're gonna get those nails down and out of our way. Now we're gonna get rid of all this flare. That uh, Olive Garden's uh, Parmesan cheese, you all say when. <laughs> yes, sir. Now, is there a time period that you'd want to wait after uh, she gets her shot? It really all depends. If the horse is extremely long and you're taking a ton of foot off of them and then nailing a shoe on them for the first time, it'd probably be beneficial for them to wait. But if it's a horse that's used to being shod on a frequent schedule, it, um, it won't really make a difference. Right here, this is called a clinch gouge. I'm putting a little bed underneath the nail for my clinch to sit down in. These are, this is your clinchers. This is gonna bend that nail down and dr now drop it into that groove. You see? into that groove that we just made. See, I bent the nail over, now it's sitting in that groove and it's flush with the hoof wall. Now do you uh, do some different things when you're talking about uh, Western discipline as opposed to like English discipline? Yeah. Um, 
it's, your trim is always the same. You're trying to get that the foot balanced and flat and square to itself. Uh, but the shoe that you put on it uh, can definitely change for each discipline. Um, these eventers, they're great for uh, any horse that is disciplined, has a lot of turns mm -hmm. and maneuvering in with that break over in the toe and the foolering. So it really depends. There isn't necessarily a, a roping shoe and a cutting shoe and a jumping shoe. It's just kind of what each discipline involves the horse doing is how you need to shoe it. Yes, sir. That being said, your reining horses, they get sliders on, on the hind feet to help them make those nice smooth reining stops. And then jumpers, a lot of times we add holes and, um, and tap them so that you can screw studs in and add extra traction in the heels. So right now it's gonna be the same idea that we did on the front foot. We're gonna clean it up, get it trimmed square, flat and then balanced, and then go to shaping on our shoes. So her foot's pretty much right there. There's really nothing to take, so we're just gonna make sure it's nice and flat. Might fit. So you see her foot's very controversy to the front feet that are more round. You see it points here. This is our widest point and then it starts to point back to your heels. And that's where you get that diamond shape from. So this is a plain shoe. It's not a front or a hind. It's kind of in between both. And uh, we're gonna shape it into a hind foot. On the hinds, we're gonna put some St. Croix ultralight rim shoes on it. Like I said before, they're plain, so they're not hind or front shaped coming out of the box. We got a we got to turn them into one or the other. Uh, this shoe we decided to put on the back. It's also a rim shoe, and we have that extra fullerene in the toe. It's a little bit thinner and doesn't have quite as much of the beveled breakover because on your hind feet, you want them to be able to dig in and drive out and not so much roll over. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to mark our outside heel. Then I'm going to come to the bridge of my anvil. Point the toe, and then her widest point is just past my third nail hole. So I'm gonna come in. I'm gonna cam it right here. I'm gonna cam it right here. And we're gonna close it up a bit. You can see now it holds more of that diamond shape than compared to coming out of the box. So this is a hind foot pattern now. So close it up a little much. I'm going to have to bring this branch out a little bit more. And once I do that, we should hit our mark pretty good.
Now with the hind foot, there's a bit of a difference between the front or between the right side and the left one, right? Yeah. So Dixie's hind feet are shaped a little bit different. Her left hind has kind of your more traditional hind shape to it, um, and her right hind comes out pretty wide on her lateral side. And so we're just altering this shoe to kind of account for that a little bit more. Yes, sir. I think I'm going to need to use some different nails. So we altered the shape. We got it. Now it ma matches the foot. We like the fit. So now we're just going to go over to the grinder and safe and box out these heels and the perimeter of the shoe. Now we're using different nails on the back shoes? Yes, sir. We used uh, a City Head 5 Slim on the front shoes. And uh, those are just a little too big for these ultralights. So we're using a four and a half race on the high feet. Okay. She's got so much flare right now. I'm having trouble getting these nails to go a little bit higher mm -hmm. than I'd like them. So it's very possible she might pull these, especially with how wet it's been. Yep. But just let me know if she does. Okay. And we'll uh, get it put back on if she does pull it. Yep.
So same thing as the front. We cut off the excess nails. Rasp and flush. Now we rasp off all the flare. So you hear folks talk about like corrective horseshoeing. Uh-huh. Um, I mean, not every horse needs that, but would you say in a way that every shoeing is corrective? Yes, sir. You can, every time you put a shoe on the foot, you can greatly alter how that foot grows and what you turn it into. So every, you can, every time you put a shoe on, you're changing how that foot's going to be. It's yes, like you, this foot had a little less of a natural shape to it, and I fit the shoe to the foot, but then I also shape that shoe to how I want the foot to be the next time I shoe it. Yes, sir. And that is technically corrective shoeing. Now, even though we're not doing wedge shoes for a navicular horse or something of that nature, it's still a corrective shoeing because we're going to alter that foot and get it more to a correct shape. Yes, sir. Now, uh, added things like uh, different oils for the hooves, uh, wh wh what are your thoughts on that? Um, you know, all hoof conditioners are great. Definitely use them. Um, a lot of them are very similar. Personally, I just use more of a natural oil hoof dressing on a horse's foot. Um, and something like copper tox or something that's going to dry them out and keep thrush away on the bottom side. On the ground side of the foot um, but it hoof dressing the conditioners are great keeps the foot moisture keeps it to the content level that it should be yes sir um, just if you use those conditioners it's important not to go up into the cornet band up here and stay below that point because you can suffocate it and do harm instead of good yes sir you see a lot of youtube videos say you know to start at, at uh, right there on that coronary uh, band and run down, yeah. Yeah, and uh, you know, it's good to know from a professional that, that that's not the way to do it. Yeah, and it depends on the dressing, uh, on which conditioner or hook dressing you're using. Uh, but those ones with a lot of additives and stuff to it, especially the ones that are designed to keep moisture out, that you don't go into the cornet band because that's how you're going to suffocate them. Yes, sir. And that's like an oil dressing right there? This is an oil dressing, all natural hook oil dressing that I use. I put it on a sanding block on the sponge so I don't have to have the whole bottle on my cart with me. Yes, sir. And this just seals up all those pores that I opened up while rasping on the foot. And she's Bring done. Some horseshoe secret hoof conditioner on the hoof walls. Keep them nice and moisturized and help out with this horse's cracks. So we got a little old founder pony here. How we're gonna trim for the founder is uh, foundering is when the coffin bone rotates down, cuts off blood supply to the toe. And so she won't grow any depth in her toe. She'll only grow a flare. And that's how you get such long toes like that. So what you do for that trim is you're gonna knock down the heels as much as you can, and then bring the toe back as much as you can to counter react that. And you were saying that after you do that to uh, one of these ponies, it might be a little sore for a while? Yeah, this 
this one was pretty long. We cut quite a bit of foot off of it. Um, and for any horse, when you take an excessive amount of foot off, it can definitely grow sore from it. Yes, sir. Not necessarily painful, just kind of like as you cut your fingernails a little shorter than what you're used to after you let them grow out for a long time. Yes, sir. This is the rear hoof. Yes, sir. Now, is there a difference in uh, in the way you would trim a pony as opposed to a regular horse? Uh, it all depends. It's the same. It's the same aspect that we were talking about before, where you want to you map out that foot widest point center of it, four equal parts. Um, when they're foundered, you definitely trim it a different way. Yes, sir. Um, but if it's just a regular trim, uh, not really. It's the same concept. So how can you tell if a horse just has laminitis versus, versus the foundering? Foundering is kind of like the starting stages to it. Right. Um, and my first sign is how the toes were curling up. Yeah. That's a good side, sign of founder. And then if you can look here, or if Lyle can show you in the video, at the toe of the white line, it start, the white line starts getting stretched out like that. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, and that is like clear as day sign of founder. Yeah. And so it's kind of like it's not laminitis yet, but it is the starting stages of it. Yeah, sadly for the ponies, it's almost inevitable for them, especially the older they get. All right, and she is all done. This little guy's ready all to right, y'all. So that concludes the video. I want to thank Casey for coming out and, and doing the ponies feed and shoeing Dixie. Uh, he did a great job as always. Uh, he's wonderful. Uh, he was actually recommended by a dear friend of mine that I was uh, in middle school with. And he's definitely been a blessing. Uh, you know, farriers are a blessing when they're good farriers and they come out and do what they're supposed to do. And he's definitely done that. So I really do appreciate you, man. Anytime. And uh, if y'all actually have a horse in uh, South Florida and you're looking for a good farrier, uh, I'll leave the number right here to uh, Casey and uh, y'all can reach out to him. But I hope you like this video. I hope it helped you out in any way. And we'll see you on the next one. Yes, sir. Check me out on Facebook, Triple C Farrier Services. Yes, sir.